Hello, this video is to help you uh, learn how to find domain and range of a function. We'll be doing in behavior in a follow-up video. Domain and range is a concept you've been talking about since Math 1. You can probably recall doing domain and range by looking at a table of values or a set of ordered pairs. Say these values were negative 1, 5, uh, 0, 3, and 4, 6. If you were asked the domain, you would have probably stated that your um, domain, or actually, let me write these as ordered pairs as well. You would have stated that your domain were all your x values, so negative 1, 0, and 4. So the x values from your ordered pairs or the x values from your table. And likewise, your range would be the y values, so 5, 3, and 6. Um, you also learned domain when you did uh, quadratic functions in Math 2, but we will review all that um, with this set of notes here. So please fill out your study guide as you watch this video. To define domain, domain is all the input values for a function. And what we're going to spend our time doing is looking at the graphs of different functions to be able to visually see what the, those input values would be. To find the domain from a graph, meaning we would take the function and type it in y equals, or if given a graph, we need to ask ourselves, does the graph go left and right forever? forever. And why left and right? Well, recall that on a coordinate plane, your y-axis, your vertical axis, goes up and down, and your axis, x-axis goes from left to right. So when we ask for all possible x values that exist, we're speaking about the x values as we look at the function along our x-axis going from left to right. So if you ask yourself the question, does the graph go left and right forever, and you are able to answer yes, then our domain is all real numbers. And remember, numbers are numbers that you can actually count. You will learn about a set of numbers that are not real a little bit later in this course. So all real numbers. Those would include integers like 5 or negative 3, and also rational numbers like three-sevenths or pi even. Um, how we would write this, remember we've already watched the, the video on interval notation. If it goes left and right forever, that means our lowest x value is negative infinity and our highest x value is positive infinity. We can equate that to, um, similar to before, if we were to shade the entire number line that goes left and right, here we would say negative infinity to positive infinity. Lowest to the highest is our domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. If we say no, our graph does not go left and right forever, then we ask ourselves a new question. We say, okay, well, does the graph go left forever from a certain point or right forever from a certain point? So let's ask left or right forever from where? And in that case, if we know that it goes left forever, we know it's heading towards negative infinity or right forever towards positive infinity. But we would have a specific value that we could use in our interval as well. But we'll do an example of that in just a moment. Range, to define range, range is all our output values or our y values. Think about a table of values your x being your domain and your y's being your range. So all output values that exist on a function. And we're going to ask a similar set of questions as we do with domain. But remember this time we're talking about um, the range being our y values and recall up here looking at our coordinate plane, our y values 
um, or lie along our y-axis, which is vertical, meaning it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity, so from bottom to top here. So we ask ourselves, does the graph go up or down forever? Well, I should say up and down. Please change that. Does the graph go up and down forever? If we can answer yes, then range is all real numbers. So that would be our answer, all real numbers. But of course, that's what it means, but that's not how we write it. It's just like we did with domain, down forever would be negative infinity, up forever would be positive infinity. So what I would really like you to remember is that range is always going to be your lowest y to the highest y. And then similar for domain, it's always going to be your lowest x to the highest x. Okay. So back to range here, um, we say if it goes up and down forever, like a line, if you think about a line, a line would go up and down forever, then we would say range is all reals. But if it doesn't go up and down forever, we again ask a different question. Well, does it go up or down forever from a certain number? So we'll say up or down forever from where? And this will apply in our next, our first example coming up up or down forever from where. So for example one, we are given what's called a square root function. This function is y equals the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So it really doesn't matter what the name of the function is. What matters is what it looks like when we graph it. So notice that we have what we call an initial point here at 1, 2. And we notice that it kind of curves to the right and goes up and notice that there's an arrow at the end. We should understand that that arrow indicates that it will continue to go right forever and up forever at the same time. So let's ask ourselves the first question for domain. Does our graph go left and right forever? Nope, it doesn't go left and right forever. It only goes right forever. So again, if no, left or right forever from where? Well, it goes right forever from an x value of 1. So remember what that means on a number line. If we start at 1, we would have a closed circle, and I'm going to do my number line here, use my x-axis as a number line, and we would go right forever from 1. So again, remember lowest x to the highest x, highest x being towards positive infinity, where our, our lowest x is 1 our interval is going to be 1 to infinity. We have to remember whether to use brackets or parents around these numbers. Because it does include the value 1, we will use a bracket. And remember for infinity, we always use a parent. So our domain for this function would be 1 inclusive to infinity. For range, we're going to start by asking ourselves this question up here. Does the graph go up and down forever? Well, it does go up forever, but not down forever. If we start from our lowest y to the highest y, notice that the lowest y value is 2, and then it goes up forever. So if I was to think about this on my y-axis as a number line, at 2, I would have a closed circle. And since it goes up forever, I would shade my y-axis here. So think about how we would write the interval for that graph. Our lowest y is 2, it does include 2, and it goes up forever towards infinity. So our range would be 2 inclusive to infinity. For example 2, we have a quadratic function. Remember a quadratic function has a graph that is a parabola. In this case our parabola opens down and goes down forever. If we think about what this is doing on the left side, it's going down and left forever. And if this were to continue, it would be going down and right forever. So while it's going down faster than it is going right, it is still going down and right and down and left. So remember, here we ask ourselves for domain, does the graph go left and right forever? 
it does. It goes down and left and down and right. So because I did say down and or excuse me, right and left, our domain would be all real numbers, which we write as negative to positive infinity. Our range, we ask ourselves, does the graph go up and down forever? Well, it's going up, but it stops at a y value of 1. It does go down forever. So when we write this on a number line, we are going from 1 down to negative infinity. But remember that when you read your range, you always read it from your lowest to the highest y, from bottom to top. So our lowest is negative infinity, 1 is our highest y, so it's going to be negative infinity to 1 inclusive. We are including the y value of 1 because there is nothing to indicate that it would be a closed circle at 1. Next, for example 3, we are looking at a graph of a unique function called a cubic function. We should always assume that if we see a graph that does not have arrows on the end, but that does touch the edge of the graph, that it is a continuous function, meaning it would have arrows and keep going um, on and on. So again, starting with our domain, does our graph go left and right forever? Well, if we follow along from the origin and go left, we can see it does go down and left forever. It also goes right and up forever. So does our graph go left and right forever? Yes, it does. So our domain would be negative to positive infinity. That means that there can be any x value, negative 9 trillion if, you, if uh, we wanted to look at that point. It does exist on this function. For range, does our graph go left, or, excuse me, up and down forever? Yes, it does. So since we said yes to range, it's all real numbers, which we would write as negative to positive infinity as well. Next, if we take a look at this graph, this is the graph of a vertical line. A vertical line um, goes up and down. In this case, it is going up and down forever. And the equation of this line would be x equals, x equals because it goes through the x-axis and not the y, but the x value is negative 2. So in this case, when we ask ourselves, does the graph go left and right forever, it does not. In fact, the only x value that exists is negative 2. So our domain is only negative 2. We are going to put brackets around both sides to indicate that it does include negative 2 and no other number. For range, we again ask ourselves, does the graph go up and down forever? In this case, it does. So that means it's from negative infinity to positive infinity, our lowest y to the highest y. Okay? Oh, let's make sure we close that off. So hopefully you're understanding how to look at the graph and identify domain and range at this point. But let's just quickly talk about how we know when to use a bracket versus a parent. And remember, parent is singular for parentheses. So a bracket we use whenever we have a number. If you take a look, we have the numbers 1 and 2. We used a bracket. Over here, the highest value was 1, so we used a bracket. Notice everywhere we used infinity, we always had parents or parentheses. Okay? So we're going to use a bracket when you have to write a number. Sorry about all these announcements, guys. The custodial staff will be shutting things down and putting the alarm on about 5 o'clock. So please your time to get everybody out of the building. Closed circle, and I'm going to hope that that reminds you of our discussion about whether it has the equal to. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully that reminds you of the prior video when we talked about open circle versus closed circle. There are every now and then graphs where it may exclude a point and you would actually see an open circle, but for the case of looking at these functions, we are pretty much always going to be using a bracket when we write the number. We use a parent when writing, um, let's see, when writing a positive infinity or negative infinity or 
when you have an open circle. Okay. So remember that um, domain refers to our x value, so we are always going to read our domain from left to right. I highly recommend you either take a pen or pencil and start on the left side and think, does my graph exist? Yes, 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 it exists. Yes, yes, it will continue to exist as we go right. So we write our values from lowest to highest. Range, we are going to change since our y-axis is vertical and read it from the bottom to the top on our graph. So hopefully that helped clarifies for you domain and range. The next video will be about finding end behavior.